Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Searching for a suspect after a man and woman are shot in downtown Belleville. That's where we're starting this noon. I'm Kim DiGiulio. And I'm Jason Colthorpe. That shooting happened in the heart of Belleville, right on Main Street. It was late last night where investigators have now been on the scene for several hours. We have our Will Jones there live. And Will, we understand police are also looking for a stolen vehicle? Kim and Jason, they believe that stolen vehicle is connected to the shooting that happened here last night. I want to show you some of the damage left behind, but police really have not gone into detail about what happened here. Take a look at this. You see that building there. There is some damage. It appeared that a car jumped the curb last night. And while that car jumped the curb, I want to show you this. This is the, the street sign that was near where that building is right there. So that just gives you an idea of some of the damage. I want you to look at some video that we shot. Last night, officers were on scene for hours. The number of evidence markers gives you an idea of just how many shots were fired. Police say a man and a woman were shot. Both were taken to a hospital. The man's injuries are more serious. Around the time of the shooting, Belleville and Van Buren Township officers pursued a possible stolen vehicle leaving the area. And again, they believe the person or people in the vehicle are connected to the shooting. This has people in this area on alert. No, that's the thing. It never really gets overly crowded or anything, you know, so it's just in a small town and everybody's friendly and we, God, always felt safe. It's a shame. I, I'm in utter shock. My whole family, my daughter lives close. My, we live close. I mean, it's, it's disappointing. So a lot of questions right now, and police have not released a lot of information. This is an ongoing information, uh, ongoing investigation, I should say. But police say no one is in custody, and they have not released any details about possible suspects. We're live in Belleville. Will Jones, Local 4. Yeah, and if uh, those are all shell cases, you can imagine how dangerous that was. All right, Will. The other developing story is the growing tension between the UAW and Detroit's Big Three. In his update last night, UAW President Sean Fain told members, despite giving the companies what they expect from a contract, he's heard nothing back from Jim and Stellantis. That's why Fain says the union filed an unfair labor practice charge against each. Ford did respond, offering a 9% wage increase over the life of the contract. The UAW is asking for 46%. On top of many other demands, Fain says the UAW wants to reach a deal, but the union will strike if it has to. I want to be very clear about this. Our goal is not to strike. Our goal is to bargain a fair contract. But if we have to strike to win economic and social justice, then we will. Both Stellantis and General Motors are refuting the unfair labor dispute charges in a statement GM saying, quote, we believe it has no merit and is an insult to the bargaining committees. We have been hyper focused on negotiating directly and in good faith with the UAW and are making progress. Two men are back in court today in connection to the sextortion scheme, which ended with a Marquette teenager taking his own life. 17-year-old Jordan DeMay committed suicide last March. Investigators say he was targeted through Instagram by the men posing as a girl to send, him sex to send them sexually explicit, explicit material. Prosecutors say the men then tried to extort money from DeMay. Samuel and Samson Ogashi are facing charges in federal court in Grand Rapids. They were extradited from Nigeria to Michigan earlier last month. Communities are assessing the damage after Idalia today. President Biden is promising federal assistance now for a full recovery. There's a problem, though. FEMA's funds are running dangerously low after recent weather-related damage around the country. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with how communities will assess how they will clean up. President Biden will travel to Florida this weekend to survey the damage from Adalia, and he's also urging Congress to replenish disaster relief funds. Cleanup is underway after Adalia left a path of destruction along the southeast United States. We weren't prepared to lose all of this. President Biden will get a first-hand look at the damage when he travels to Florida Saturday. He announced the trip during a visit to FEMA headquarters. You know, I'm here to thank all of you, and I really mean this. Thank you. 
Governors also praising state and local responders for their efforts. There's a lot of resources being put on this on this mission to be able to get them up up and running as quickly as possible. Amazing response. They've gotten a lot done. Utility crews from across the country are helping to restore power. We are working 24 hours a day and we will be on the job until we get everybody's lights back on. Lawmakers return from recess next week, and President Biden is urging Congress to approve more disaster relief money. We need this money done. We need this disaster relief request met. We need to do it in September. We can't wait. The president requesting $12 billion to ensure that FEMA can help communities impacted by disasters recover. And some Republicans have criticized President Biden's request for more disaster aid because it's also tied to providing more aid for Ukraine. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. All right, Bree. According to new data released Friday, the U.S. economy added 187,000 jobs in August, slightly more than expected. That number is similar to last month's job gains, although the July total was revised down to 157,000 jobs. The unemployment rate went up to 3.8 percent from 3.5 percent. The Federal Reserve is continuing efforts to bring down inflation without triggering mass job joblessness. To fight the staggering amount of animals without homes, the Ann Arbor Humane Society is offering free adoptions through Sunday. Great time to get a pet. Right now, they have 450 pets in their care. 23 of those pets have been there for a combined total of 13,000 days, far too long. All of the animals are spayed, neutered, up to date with vaccines, and are microchipped. The shelter's CEO, Tanya Higendorf, says the animals are perfectly suited for human companions. A great idea to adopt a dog. If you're thinking about it, yeah. what better time, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, it is the 92nd annual Peach Festival, and it's underway right now in Romeo. 92 straight years. They must be doing something right. <laughs> right? Uh, we're partners with with the uh, the Peach folks over there, and that's why so many of us will be hanging out there this weekend. For you Local 4 insiders, you can score tickets to the Local 4 VI Peach Hour, where some of the Local 4 crew will be both Saturday and Sunday. I know uh, Kimberly Gill and I will be out there Saturday. I think Karen Drew's going to be out there at some point. I'm gonna, a lot of us just look for us. Just head on to click on Detroit.com and you'll be able to find a ticket and a free and easy way to become an insider. And we had, uh, we just had live in the D broadcast live from yeah, there. So it right. looks gorgeous. And that's just kind of the start of what's I think is going to be a pretty gorgeous weekend, Ashley. No matter where you're going. <laughs> well, you aren't kidding. Anywhere in Michigan is going to be gorgeous. So whether you're heading up north or staying here in Metro Detroit or going to spend some time in Romeo at the Peach Festival, the forecast is shaping up to be beautiful. So heading out this afternoon, this is the more comfortable start to the weekend before we really start to look at toasty temperatures. But we have blue skies up above a couple little wispy clouds have developed, but 74 in the city, 73 in Howell, 71 in Pontiac and 71 in Adrian and some light winds out there, light and variable at the moment. So as we look at clouds and radar, we have a dome of high pressure that impacts the plains, keeping most of the plains dry and the Great Lakes region. We have some of the showers coming off of the Gulf and so our southern states getting a little bit of rain and then off to the southwest as well, even desert southwest getting some of that rain. But today here closer to home, no rain in our forecast. Look at all that sunshine that we have in store this afternoon. We'll top out around 76, so it'll be a little warmer than yesterday and just a little bit below the average high of 79 degrees. And then if you're heading out to the Friday football frenzy game of the week or another high school football game around town, kickoff at 7 will be right around 72 degrees, and then we fall into the 60s throughout game time. But our game of the week will be Detroit Southeastern taking on Detroit Edison. So it's certainly going to be a good one. And then the forecast this week is pretty good, too, going into the Labor Day weekend. So 84 degrees tomorrow. We're warming things up feeling like the dog days of summer Sunday. We've only had two days this year that we've hit 90 and we could potentially hit that Sunday. That kick starts a stretch of 90 degree days, 92 for Labor Day, which puts us near record territory. So we'll talk more about that in a bit, but if you do have plans to be out and about, probably not going to need to track radar this weekend, but you can follow that hour by hour forecast to help map out those temperatures and help you stay on the cool side with our forewarned weather app.